I want you to have a look at these individuals. Think about the things they have in common and the things that are different about them. The different ages, different heights. One is the president of the United States and the other is just a seemingly innocent Aussie school kid. On the other hand, they're both male, they both have blonde hair, and they're both a little bit racist. Well, one a little more than the other. Now I know what you're thinking. This kid is like, what, five years old? He doesn't even see race. And you're probably feeling fairly uncomfortable that I just insinuated that this sweet little blonde haired, blue eyed kid might be a closet racist. And you're not alone. Research shows that we don't like talking about race. And we especially don't like talking about race with kids. However, racial bias does not magically appear in adulthood. It begins early in childhood, slowly develops across the lifespan, and becomes deeply ingrained and resistant to change by adulthood. Research shows that children have the potential to embody racially biased views and to act in racially prejudiced ways. They also experience racism regularly. In fact, the most common spaces children experience racism is within school settings. This happens at systemic levels, from teachers, but most commonly, children report that it is other children engaging in these behaviours. Findings from my latest paper looking at racism in Australian schools supports this international research. My paper also revealed that although children are capable and in need of discussions about race, Parents and teachers are actively avoiding these conversations and maintaining the colourblind view that children don't see race. The problem with this approach is that not talking about race does nothing to combat the issue. Not talking about race with children means negative views go unchecked and continue into adulthood. However, when adults do talk about race with children, it has been shown to decrease bias and increase pro-social views. School is not only a space where children experience racism, it is a space where they learn positive and negative messages about race. So what we should be doing is capitalising on the socialisation potential of schools to guide student attitudes for the better. This is where my research comes in. My paper revealed a lack of research in Australia. It also revealed a mismatch between what children need and what teachers and parents are providing them with. The next phase of my research aims to fill this gap by exploring students' understanding and experiences of race, their level of racial bias, and how this ties into their sense of school belonging. I want to understand these issues through the eyes of Australian students to shed light on what they need from us in the way of education moving forward. My research will have implications for policy, practice and research, helping to build more inclusive and equitable schools for all Australian students, regardless of their race or ethnicity. It will also provide an understanding of how school context can be used to reduce racial bias in children, hopefully meaning that this sweet little kid doesn't follow in the footsteps of this guy. Thank you.